Well done on this one. And uh, tell us, are, are you of uh, the view that this strong steel production in China is likely to continue till the end of the year and therefore also support iron ore and your profits? Well, it's always, always difficult to predict the future, but we've seen a very, very strong seven months in terms of Chinese crude steel production up 2.8% year on year. So very much we're seeing that ongoing strong demand. In terms of the outlook for the rest of the year, we usually see some seasonality as, uh, as the Northern Hemisphere heads into winter. So we'll obviously continue to, to watch that carefully. Importantly for us, though, we've actually delivered these record results. We've continued shipments to our customers where maintained a, an industry-leading cost position and driving very strong margins. So we'll stay very focused on the things we can control, including our product strategy, uh, our low-cost position, and we're generating very strong cash flows. Yeah, also, Elizabeth, you, you know, we've seen relations uh, between Beijing and Canberra and get worse. Uh, are you sure that... Uh, are you, are you, do you have a plan in place to make sure that perhaps iron ore stays above the geopolitical fray here? Well, I think we've demonstrated over many years that we're a very uh, secure and uh, reliable supplier of iron ore um, from the Pilbara in Western Australia. In a time when we've seen other disruptions to other markets, whether that's South Africa or uh, South America, what we're actually seeing is that the Australian producers are demonstrating that they are a very uh, reliable supplier of iron ore to a market that is demanding iron ore. So we just focus on maintaining that close contact with our customers. And we are seeing very strong engagement with our customers. We have, we've seen um, stockpiles of iron ore at Chinese ports and at steel mills are actually at, at, at low levels. So there is that very strong ongoing demand for seaborne iron ore. I mean, how important is China in the, indeed in terms of actually supporting the iron ore price? Is it absolutely front and centre or are there other factors in place here? Well, China is the key producer of, um, of steel globally. So for the 2019 calendar year, China was just over 50 per cent of global steel production. And I think in, uh, in 2020, that would have increased because there are other industries and other parts of the world that have been more heavily impacted by COVID and that that's impacted on their uh, steel industry. So China is absolutely critical to the... Uh, ongoing demand for iron ore, um, as I said, at over 50% of, of crude steel production. And we've seen that grow by 2.8% in this first seven months of this calendar year. So, you know, China is continuing to invest in infrastructure. Their economy has made a remarkable um, comeback from the impact of COVID-19 earlier this year. And we're seeing the ongoing strength and therefore demand for, uh, for iron ore. Elizabeth, are you concerned about oversupply risks with uh, Vale coming back online? Well, I think, um, you know, Vale had a significant impact to their supply uh, at the beginning of 2019, following that tailings dam uh, collapse. So prior to that, um, Vale were producing it, or getting close to that 400 million tonnes a year of of iron ore uh, production. That's this year, I think they've guided to around between 310 and 330 million tonnes, and they've seen some impacts of COVID-19 as well. So um, the, that production was there previously. It was impacted, and we've seen that supply side um, impact. We're very focused on, main, on, on influencing those things that we can control. So it's about our product strategy, our costs, and delivering iron ore to our customers. Um, you know, there's, it's a function of supply and demand. We're seeing very strong demand. Vale have indicated that over time they, ex they expect to get back to where they were previously. Um, you know, and we're delivering on our major projects as well. We have our Alawana Mine and Rail project and we have our Ironbridge project, which is a high-grade magnetite concentrate with that project due to have first ore on ship in the first half of calendar year 2022. So we're very focused on our customers, our supply and keeping the settings right so we continue to generate those very strong cash margins and very strong returns to our shareholders. But having said that, is it inevitable that the price gains in iron ore that we saw this year would be reversed? 
Uh, I never like to predict where, what the iron ore price might do. I think, you know, it is a function of supply <laughs> and demand. Uh, we're, seeing, we're seeing very strong demand in terms of that increase in uh, crude steel production. Uh, even just in 2019, crude steel production in China reached close to a billion tonnes uh, and is on track this year to exceed that. So it is a function of supply and demand. Um, we're, as I said, we're, we're developing our business, we're growing our business, we're adding magnetite concentrates, so we remain very confident in the long-term uh, fundamentals and the long-term outlook. But the iron ore price is cyclical. Um, there is, uh, over you know, history, there's been volatility. We're very focused on getting the settings in place. We've got a very strong balance sheet. By being a low-cost producer, we can continue to generate those strong margins through those market cycles. And Elizabeth, we know that Fortescue is exploring opportunities in Afghanistan, a market which your rivals deem as perhaps too risky. Do you see markets like Afghanistan giving Fortescue a competitive edge? Well, look, we have a very active corporate development team and they look at opportunities around the world. I probably wouldn't just focus on Afghanistan because some of those exploratory uh, initial discussions that have been reported were largely around philanthropic efforts. So the efforts of our chairman, Dr Andrew Forrest, and his uh, approach, he often talks to world leaders around uh, philanthropic activities. But we do have an active corporate development team and we will look at opportunities. Risk and security are always a factor in any decisions that we might take. The health and safety of people work Working with communities is absolutely fundamental to us. Uh, but, you know, we've got our operations in South America where, you know, two or three years ago we didn't have any operations there. We're now exploring and drilling in those countries, albeit at the moment that's paused due to COVID. So we've said for some time now that we're interested in, in diversification to assessing those opportunities, largely through exploration, but in a low-cost manner. And uh, risk and security is always first and foremost for us. Elizabeth, you mentioned other opportunities. Is there one of the other opportunities, given that you've uh, signed various agreements with other companies on hydrogen, what is the likely role of hydrogen in your company looking forward? Well, we just signed two agreements last week, actually, an MOU with Hyundai and CSIRO on uh, hydrogen as, as a, for mobility, as well as another agreement uh, looking at the opportunity to replace our existing diesel fuel coaches at our Christmas Creek mine site with hydrogen fuel coaches and refuelling infrastructure. So there's, there's two aspects to the opportunity with hydrogen. One is as a source of energy for our existing operations. We have set a very ambitious climate change target to reach net zero operational emissions emissions by 2040. And to do that, we see hydrogen potentially paying a part in terms of our own decarbonisation of our existing operations. On the other hand, we see the potential for hydrogen to be a major export market for Australia in the future. And that's why we're working with, uh, we know countries like South Korea and Japan ultimately will be net importers of hydrogen sourced from renewables. So it's pretty exciting. It's, as I said, part of our very ambitious decarbonisation agenda, but we also see that opportunity for an export market in the future.